Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our third lecture in GIT diseases. Today we are talking about stomach. Stomach, which is an expanded portion of GI tracts located between esophagus and duodenum, and uh, it has the same layer of esophagus we talked about, which is the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, and serosa. But the difference here, we have an extra layer of oblique muscles, and this is used for mechanical digestion, mechanical parts of digestion. And by this, I mean there is two parts of digestion in the stomach. One is the mechanical, and the other is chemical. Let's take it in details. Uh, the mechanical part of digestion is very fascinating. Uh, if you are uh, looking for the shape of the stomach and the way the muscle contracts, uh, you will be amazed. Now, the first or the proximal part of the stomach, uh, the fundus and the proximal body, has always a tonic contraction. هذا الجزء من المعدة دائما يكون متقلص. ليش؟ Why? To create a pressure difference. There is always a pressure difference between the stomach and the intestine. The distal part, the lower part of the body and the antrum, it has a different way of movement, of contraction. There is a grinding uh, movement. A peristaltic wave begins in distal part and end to the pylorus. Uh, the, the proximal part, as we agreed, that is permit a pressure uh, on the stomach content. The distal part will grind this content, and the peristaltic wave, when it reach the pylorus, the pylorus contract so to prevent the passage of undigested food to the intestine, and it's open in sprouts once open and once closed to allow a minimum amount, small amount of food that are less than two millimeters to pass into the duodenum. Uh, and uh, for something we wonder you that the stomach has a pacemaker located in the greater curvature. And that's why on the juice of mechanic in the hadum, the juice of all she feel that job. The juice the proximal in the stomach. He saw a pressure, and when he saw a pressure difference between the stomach and the intestine, with just the distal, he saw a grinding movement, and it was not like it. But when it was a hyperstatic wave, it was a pylorus, it was a pylorus that was not good. And it was a pylorus that was not good. 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 But if it was a pylorus, Chemical digestion, on the chemical side of digestion, we have uh, types of cells in the mucosa and distributed in a very smart way. For example, we have G cells and it's named G after gastrin. Gastrin increase acidity of the stomach. So this set of cells is found in the entrum. مثل لما نحن نريد نقيس الدهن مع السيارة نخلي الجيج يوصل للنهاية فلما الأسدتة قليلة وين تبين أكثر شيء نشوفه بالنهاية في المعدة فلهذا مكان الجي سيلز كلش رائع بنفس الوقت الدي سيلز which secretes somatostatin which decreases acidity is located all over the stomach كل المعدة موجود ليش؟ لأنه قلة الأسدتي أو عفوا كثرة الأسدتي تأثر على كل أماكن المعدة فالستوماتستاتين موجود بكل مكان هذه الجزء. الجزء الثاني أن ال parietal cells which secrete the acid, hydrochloric acid, is stimulated by gastric cell, gastrin, and by acetylcholine and by histamine. So when parietal cell is stimulated, it secretes hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid not only digests the food but uh, allows or promote chief cell to secrete pepsino, pepsin, or to convert pepsinogen into pepsin. Hydrochloric acid has a role in converting pepsinogen into pepsin and hence uh, catalyze proteins. And at the same time, there is a type of cell called genetic cells uh, and uh, will secrete uh, 
intrinsic factor which allow B12 absorption and all of this happens at a concordance في الشيء رائع كله يحصل سوي كل الخلايا كل خلية موجودة بمكان معين أكثر من باقي الأماكن حسب مكانها وحسب احتياجها اتفقنا إنه الجاسترين والهستامين والستوكولين يحفز البرايتالسيا على أفراد الهيدروكلوريك أسيد الهيدروكلوريك أسيد يفعل لنا البنسين اللي يبقوا منه البروتين ونفس الوقت الانترنسيك فاكتر يحسب لنا فيتامين بي 12 للجسم يساعد بامتصاص فيتامين بي 12 كل هاي الأمور الرائعة تأثر بالاستومك هسا بتاعها شوية and let's jump to stomach diseases First let's begin in gastritis and gastritis is a histological diagnosis that means we need a biopsy to confirm that gastritis so diagnosis of gastritis needs endoscopy and biopsy Type of gastritis we have acute gastritis and chronic gastritis Acute gastritis usually the type of cell we found in biopsy is in neutrophil and uh, the acute stimulant or the acute irritant to stomach can cause it acute H. pylori for example drugs, aspirin, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, alcohol uh, all of acute insult can result in acute gastritis it may produce no symptoms it may produce symptoms that leads to hematemesis severe pain and hematemesis and we will deal accordingly Treatment may be not needed or maybe need a proton pump inhibitor, prokinetic, uh, anti-emetic according to symptoms. Chronic gastritis, most likely due to H. pylori, but there is another type of a chronic gastritis. For example, there is autoimmune, uh, there is uh, autoantibodies uh, targeting uh, parietal cells. There is a rare disease which is called miniature, miniature disease, uh, the, the mucous cells replace chief and parietal cells. And there, is a list of, <coughs> and there is a list of causes of chronic gastritis. I will put it to you in the PDF of the lecture. Now let's talk about the most common disease of the stomach. We are talking andudinum for example, for sure. We are talking about peptic ulcer disease. When you want to translate the word peptic, it means relate to digestion, especially in acidic content. Uh, also, discontinuity of the epithelium. Now we get the idea. It's an ulcer of the stomach or duodenum. In rare cases, esophagus or even duodenum, if the patient has gastrectomy and the duodenum is attached to the stomach as a way of if the erosion does not reach the muscular part, we call it erosion. If it reach the muscular parts here, it's also. Socrates is the first to describe a gastric pain, and the scientist or college named after it, Avicenna, Ibn Sina, is the first who described the relation to food, the relation to meal. If someone asks you about the causes or the pathophysiology or how peptic ulcer disease occur, uh, say with confidence, H. pylori. H. pylori is the most common cause of peptic ulcer diseases. Uh, actually, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, smoking, uh, can cause peptic ulcer, but in most of cases, in about 70% uh, of cases of gastric ulcer and 90% of cases in duodenal uh, ulcer, the cause is H. pylori. H. pylori is a spiral organism, gram-negative, have uh, a cilia, long cilia on one side. Uh, it has, has a trick to uh, decrease high acidity between its cell wall. It can produce a urease, which converts uh, ammonia, urea to ammonia and cause a decrease in acidity around the organism. Again, it's attached to the least acidic part in the stomach and he has the spirals which allows it to move. So H. pylori uh, is very common. It can reach up to 90% in developing countries. Our country is one of these countries and it's strongly associated with peptic ulcer diseases. H. pylori exclusively uh, attach or invest a gastric mucosa. 
So how can we found it in duodenum? Uh, we found it only in places where there is a gastric metabolase in duodenum. So it attacks and it infects only gastric type of mucus. Uh, regarding the clinical features, uh, actually H. pylori infection uh, can cause pancreatitis, can cause uh, can cause no symptoms at all and can cause severe form of gastritis according to patient. So, uh, regarding the clinical features of peptic ulcer diseases, which is in most cases, as we said, H. pylori infection, uh, there is a three characteristic trait. First, the pain is usually located in the epigastrium. Uh, second, it relates to food. Uh, third, it's an episodic. It can last for life. If there is abnormal and frequent vomiting, we may suspect a gastric outlet obstruction. And uh, the condition may progress to hematemesis and melina, to erosion or to perforation and uh, acute abdomen accordingly. It can cause no symptoms at all. Uh, the patient may present suddenly with uh, a bleeding from uh, a barge eye source or it can cause severe pain. This depends on its location, size, site, number, uh, chronic or acute, and so Regarding the management, the aim of management is to uh, heal the patient, prevent recurrence and eradication of H. pylori. So in the eradication of H. pylori, we will need two antibiotics, amoxicillin, clarithromycin, and metronidazole, we choose two of them, with proton pump inhibitor, at least for seven days, but expanding it to two weeks make a better outcome. Proton pump inhibitor in two uh, doses per day also uh, increase the risk of eradication, increase the score in eradication of H. pylori. Uh, sometimes there is a resistance, especially for metronidazole or clarithromycin. Uh, we can use uh, bismuth uh, along with uh, omeprazole and metronidazole and tetracycline uh, again for two weeks. Sometimes we have a resistance, so we can use a microbiological culture and assess the next step to do. How we use a safe therapy by using levofloxacin, clarithromycin, and proton pump inhibitor. The idea is to eradicate H. pylori. There is extra gastric uh, use of eradication of H. pylori. For example, in unexplained P12 deficiency and iron uh, deficiency anemia, and in ITB, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, uh, eradication of H. pylori may gain benefits. Uh, also, for sure, we have to uh, ask the patient to not use or uh, to stay away from non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. Aspirin, if needed, we can add proton pump inhibitor. Alcohol should be against, uh, discourage the patient about its use, in, especially in high amounts. Sometimes we need surgery to treat uh, a peptic ulcer, and this has indication and side effects, and I put it for you in the PDF you will receive also. Let's talk about complications of uh, <laughs> Now let's talk about complication of uh, peptic ulcer diseases. We have a perforation, bleeding, or gastric outlet obstruction. Perforation, we have perforated viscous. So the most striking feature is pain. Pain will follow the, the, the fluid or the content of the uh, intestine which uh, pass into the peritoneum and causes peritonitis. So striking feature will be severe pain. There will be a rigid abdomen. Uh, we can find air under life arm as we agreed. Uh, if not, and we have a suspicion, we can use a water soluble contrast to assess the site of perforation, water soluble, not barium. And the treatment is usually surgical. Uh, regarding bleeding, we will talk it in details in another subject. Uh, the idea is simple, uh, there is erosion of our blood vessels. Uh, regarding gastric outlet obstruction, is one of the causes of peptic ulcer disease, one of the complications of peptic ulcer disease. And uh, I put for you a, a detailed types of uh, causes of gastric outlet obstruction and peptic ulcer disease and the treatment of it. You remember the function of the stomach, how it secretes the food, if we have uh, non-organic diseases of the stomach, we will call it a functional 
gastric diseases. I want to tell you especially about gastroparesis. You remember that we have said that there's a pacemaker in the stomach, there may be a failure on this. There may be a problem in the in your in your logical part, autonomic nerves, for example, diabetic neuropathy, or the muscle, for example, multiple sclerosis. Uh, any problem that they're not associated with a mechanical obstruction, we call it a functional. And here we call it a gastroparesis. And gastroparesis uh, can be treated according to the cause, according, and we can change the lifestyle of the patient, small meals. Also, we can give a prokinetic agent. Uh, functional gastric diseases is a wide, and there is no specific investigation or specific treatment. Just look at it and see you in the next lecture. Goodbye.